the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to I wanted to ask you something here. What's this? One second, get back to the camera. I, my brother let you know my uh, my my brother was listening to to the one we just sent out. And uh <laughs> he he got all he got all worked up on me. What do you mean? What do you mean no kingdom before Jesus Christ? And uh, I was telling him, I said, when we were talking about a worldly kingdom that God set up. Hey, Brother Addison. You said something? Yeah. Can't hear him. You hear him, Bishop? Yeah. You are at Addison? Anyway, he was he was out. I was telling the difference between your focus was on the spiritual kingdom of God, and we were talking about the first. Well, you, I know you said you didn't want to call it a kingdom, but the first dominion was set up by God for man on earth. But he, he was like, "What do you mean? I don't understand that." So I was just making sure he got he got all worked up on it. <laughs> Here you go. The simple question is, can you have a kingdom without a king? Well, I thought, you know, we talked about last week, we said Adam was the king. No. Yeah, okay, Adam was the man with dominion. If Adam was the king, then why did Jesus need to come? No, because he fell. He fell just like just like uh, Saul fell. Matter of fact, you know what? I keep seeing this uh, little parallels of the gospel of the uh, the gospel throughout the Old Testament. All I, you know, like Saul was king, right? Saul lost his kingdom. Okay, come on, listen. A, a spiritual kingdom can't fail. Right, right. I'm talking. I just we said king. Uh, right. right. I want it separate. If, if in the spiritual king, if the king fail, you ain't got no kingdom no more. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> la, 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 la. I ain't talking about the spirit. I'm trying to say it's it's like a, what you can see is the two parallels of kingdoms. I mean, the, you know, the earthly. Uh, it's a parallel. You can see a shadow of it. What happened well, on earth? Well, I agree with that. But your shadow is not you. Yeah, right. Now you talking about you mean man? Because your, your shadow doesn't have a reality. Okay. You are the reality of your shadow. No, no, nobody is going to come and talk to your shadow. Oh, yeah, right. I thought, no, I thought nobody it was is just going to. A, um, was it, you know, in the Bible, in the Old Testament was written for examples anyway. So all of that stuff, the whole entire Old Testament, is actually pointing toward Jesus. Right, right. And the kingdom that he is going to establish. Right. And and, and I uh, guess we can say I'm that. Gonna say, I'm going to say to my Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within you. Right. And you can't have, you can't have a kingdom without the spirit of God in you. Right. Right. And nobody received the Spirit of God until Pentecost. Yeah, and, and on my fact, I meant to I meant to talk to you about that. The kingdom of God and and right 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 with me here. And I think we I wanted because I wanted to follow back on that one anyway. The kingdom of God always existed. Right? You got a verse? Yeah. I'm talking about the fact is that God, I'm talking about God's kingdom. 
And and the scriptures, I mean, I'm saying this, God is the is the king, right? God is the king. Right. And he's God always the king. had a kingdom. And nobody else could never be the king in his place. Right. He, that is why Jesus had to come. Yeah, but Je what Jesus bringing me, what Jesus was saying that the kingdom of God had, it wasn't established then, it was always from the foundation of time, right? Because yeah. remember, you remember in Isaiah where Satan said, I would exalt myself. I think he even said above the throne of God. Yes. So I'm saying is that kingdom, so I'm saying the kingdom of God has always existed, not in us, because we separate ourselves from it. Yeah. That's the kingdom that Jesus brought to earth. Right. So he didn't establish a kingdom. He brought the kingdom concepts to earth. So it was never in the earth before Jesus brought it. That's exactly. My point. But it always existed. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it don't do us no good. See, and I think that's the that's that's why sometimes it's referred to as the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That kingdom is heaven. That's kingdom. Now, there was a. How about the fact that there was a war in heaven? Was that was that war to? I, I hope that wasn't a war where he trying to say he was trying to establish his own kingship in heaven. Satan, you know that war where two, one third of the angels were kicked out. What was that war for? That was the uprising. He was uprising, yeah. It was never a war because he got kicked up. Yeah, he, we got. <laughs> I thought he said, said a war. He said you can't. He said a war in heaven. Calm down. <laughs> hey, hey, it might have like been a, a quick word. Like hey, how, how, how long? How long? How long does a lightning last? <laughs> What you said? It was a uh, what? How long does a bolt of lightning last? What would happen if you had to try to take over your daddy's house? <laughs> I guess it was quick. I guess it's a quick work. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, so so that was one thing I did show you. One thing I know too, as we uh, progress further. How you doing, brother Addison? I'm doing great. All right, here you good. I, uh, Bishop, I was looking at as we progress and, and break it down in the studies. I was, you see those? I don't know if you can see those red lines in there. Yeah, I see them. You and, could have picked a different I, color, but yeah. Yeah, maybe a blue. Blue would have probably stood out a lot better than red. Okay, I was. I did have blue at first, and it didn't look like it was good enough. Uh, but what I was saying is that Bishop, as you as you break down the, uh, is it is it is it fair to as we progress forward to to try to break down where a person is is is, is coming from? Could you know like you were looking at when you were looking at the uh, C CITs, you went you were you examine them by looking at where is that annotated in the text and maybe maybe one of the breakdowns of a uh, study is to to kind of say okay where you you hear something if you heard something where are you hearing it from in the text initially you know so it's kind of like it may be something to be helpful for uh people as they progress in the study is where, where are you coming from and where and where, you know, why and so forth. So I was putting down those, those uh, uh, lines. As, what, as, gonna, as, what you want to do is, is that you want to be able to identify where the word that you use in your CIT has its basis in the text. Yeah. Would they, would you, would you want to do, where did you, when you put your CIT together, do you want to? Uh, well, I guess tell you the truth. You just said you got the CIT word. 
It sounds like that word should correspond to where, how you dissected that, that scripture then, right? Yeah. The CRT has to be derived from the text. From the text, right. Every but, word in your CRT has to have a basis in the text. Right. So with, with breaking it down and slicing sometimes uh, help facilitate that? Well, I, I just do it on a verse by verse basis. I, I take a verse and I look at what the verse is saying. Right. I, I try to grab a complete thought and I try to see what that thought is saying. And I try to choose a few words that describe that thought. Right. At a very high level. I agree. But I guess, you know, like for example, when we're talking, uh, I'll put it back up there. Last week, you, we were talking about, let me see if I put it down. Here it is right here. I broke it down. The, the, the first verse in that, that story, since we say it's not too much of a text. You know when I said image, where I got the image from, I'm just saying that sometimes I, you know, as I'm reading the verse, reading the scripture, certain things may trigger me to think a certain way, to hear a certain way. So, you know, when I said the man, I just, I, a certain man, uh, because I, I was wondering what we want to do and that's why I got the word image. Man, I'm saying man was made in his image. Uh, but I'm saying it, it, it as I break, as I'm reading the scriptures, there's certain things that just make me look at and, and focus on uh, verse by verse, word by word. He did say, did he say precept by precept, a line by line, right? Anyway, right? Okay, so. Uh... So which verse did you draw image from? Image from I told you verse thirty. It's on the it's on the screen. I put the line in between it. A certain man. And the only reason I'm referring from back in Genesis, made in my image, is the fact that man is made in his image. But in this verse, did you talk about man's image? He said a certain man. But is he talking about man's image? He was talking about, look, a man made in my image, attack, attack. No, no, in the text, the text says, what he's telling you, this text is telling you that a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. Right. <laughs> but the question, the, he's not talking image. Okay, so now the fact that, so that we do, we do any focus on a certain man. I mean, that's that's really the problem. My point is, where does do we? Is that a throwaway or that's important? What's the relevance of a certain man? What does he represent? That's what I'm saying. When I'm looking at it, trying to analyze and break down it, pull well, it let's, apart. Let's, uh, let's see what Brad Allison got to tell us. Okay. About well, a certain yeah. man. Huh? <laughs> you said about a certain man. You want to know what I have to say about a certain man? We want, we want to see what you see. Let's look at you. Let's bring your CIT. Go and share it for us. Let me let me stop my share and see if I can make sure that you can share. One second. Yeah, I put it in multiple sharing so you can bring yours up. Wow. Go ahead and break. Can you make it bigger? Hit that plus sign to the left, bottom left. What plus sign? <laughs> it's all the way down at the bottom of your Word document. You see where it says uh, a plus and a minus sign? Bottom right. Okay. There you go. Bigger? I, I, got, I got it. All right. It, this is this this right here was was the first one. Uh, this is what I got right here. Both Satan and the lawyer considered. No, this right here. Oh, that's the tech. Okay, got it. 
from for for the uh, are you doing the which one you did? You did the you doing Luke, right? There you go. Okay. Yeah, Luke 10, 25 through 37. This okay. Is what, this is what my CIP for that is. Okay. And this one down here. Oh, cool. Got two of them. Look at it. All right. And then this is just part of something that I was thinking about about this. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, well, let, let's get our critique from Bishop. Go ahead, Bishop. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Okay. What is this whole parable about? This parable is about Jesus answering a question. And what question is he answering? What must I do to inherit the kingdom? Yeah. This whole parable is about that question. The whole parable. The whole parable is about how do I get eternal life? Okay. That's, that's what the whole discussion. Everything in this discussion from verse 25 through 37, everything in it is addressing how you inherit eternal life. Okay, so it's answering the question, okay? Okay, that's a good point. So we we should, I, I you know, I, I put the setting, I, could, I consider that was the scenery, right? You know, the first part of it. Uh, I was going straight to it. I think most of it goes straight toward the uh, beginning of the story. But it is addressing, Jesus is answering something. You're right. You got something. The whole, from verse 30 through 37, is an excursion only to help this man understand the meaning of neighbor in his answer to the question. That's a good point. That's how, I mean, so, so, so this parable isn't about the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan is used to help this lawyer understand the meaning of neighbor and love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't, he said, I don't know who my neighbor is. But he said, let me help you. Okay. Let me yeah. help you with this neighbor thing. I can give you an illustration. And now I'll let you answer the question. So he tells about the Good Samaritan. Then he said, now, which of these three do you think was neighbor? Uh, that's a good, you know what? <laughs> that's, I mean, I don't know, brother, Alex, did you think about that? Because I wasn't thinking. I'm telling you what I thought. Of. I, I, I read that and I thought about that. You did? But I tried to encapsulate that entire scripture from 25 to 37. Yes. And break it down to what the Spirit was telling me about that encounter with that person. That's cool. And the first thing that came to my mind was when I read this man, this certain lawyer, tempted Jesus. Okay, but it, okay. it started out with that. Okay, and in his tempting, he asked the question. Not, I don't think he was wanting to get the response that he got, but he got what he got. His response was a question, likened to when Jesus responded to Satan in Matthew's four eleven. Wow. So that's what I got from wow. the So you said it, it, is, it is written to Satan when he was being tempted. Uh -huh. And in this one, when he was being tempted, he asked the man, what is written? Yeah. And it, it it answered, it it quelled the tempter. And then when he asked another question about the scripture, he explained it to him. So that is what I got. When when tempted by one influenced by Satan, because he was, Jesus uses what is written to respond. So he uses the word to respond to send the tempter away. To, you know, to, that, that, that is that's interesting. What I got. Bitch, before you before you say anything, that, that is interesting. I I would I was I was like 
I, that is interesting. I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even went that way, but that is interesting. Uh, I, you was paralleling that too for Matthew's four eleven. Well, let me just say that apparently this question is of the utmost importance to Jesus. Now, when you go read it in the other story, when you read it in Mark and Matthew and Luke, it's uh -huh. not the lawyer that's asking the question. It's Jesus. It's Jesus that, that's giving the answer. Yes. They asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? That's true. Jesus was, Jesus, the, the uh, this, this particular story, yeah, the lawyer asked a question and Jesus giving him an answer where was it the devil in, the, in Mark, Matthew 4 was tempting Jesus to do something. You know, yeah. Addison on that one, right? See the but difference? Can ask, but see, now I, I brought up Matthew and Mark and, 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 and when I brought it up, it was, it was kind of left on the table that it was I don't know if, if everyone thought it was separate occasions or uh, or, or if, what if but it didn't, I know I know it came to mind with me when I was when I was doing my research because I, I brought it up last week uh -huh. and, and, and I mentioned I said the only difference between these between Matthew and Mark uh, with Luke is that the lawyer, yeah, yeah, you description, and Jesus made the statement in the other scriptures. And well, so, what I, was, I asked, what was the lawyer tempting Jesus to do in that in Luke? Well, from my understanding, there were others that were trying to tempt Jesus. You mean test him on catch him up on the scripture? Yes. And so after the lawyer witnessed that, then he came with this, you know, well, <laughs> and this person, and which is why I said, you know, both Satan and the lawyer could, are considered expert in the law. Okay, that's, that's it. Yeah, but I, I, so I see where you're coming from, but at the same time, like I said, the setting, I think is a little different from my perspective because they're not tempting Jesus like Satan was, they were trying to get him, you know, uh, screwed up in a tech, you know, in the scriptures to catch him at doing something like, you know, like when he was talking about, is it lawful to uh, pay taxes to Caesar or not, right? They, they, they were not tempting him to sin, they were tempting him to make a mistake. And you what is I mean? that? If, 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 if it's against the law, then what is that? that I mean, he wasn't against it, it, was, it, it wouldn't have been against God's law, on that question when it, I'm talking about the Caesar one, mm -hmm. right? And even this one is not tempting Jesus to sin. I'm just, I'm just throwing my thoughts back at you for. Okay, you know, but it about. says in the scripture, behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him. Yeah, to, to, to do what? Test him on, he wasn't tempting him to sin though, right? Was he? I'm just asking. I'm just showing it where the diff, where the person that he, he it was it was it was stated there, and obviously he was expecting something that that Jesus wasn't going to know the law or was going to say something different than what the law was. Okay, because I thought that guy was also just trying to justify himself, didn't he? <laughs> the, he was well, trying to justify himself. Wasn't Satan it's, trying to justify himself by tempting no, Jesus? No, he wasn't. It, no, not not Satan in that that temptation. He wasn't trying to justify. Well, himself. what was he doing? If he oh, wasn't he was trying to justify his position by getting Jesus to submit to him. Interesting. Okay, but I'm just saying that's a thought process. But I see 29 was, but he was willing to justify himself. Other work. The question was, Bishop. I, th I think Bishop had a good point on the fact is that. The guy was asking, what must I do? Verse 25, behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, like you were saying, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? 
And I guess he wanted Jesus, he wanted to trick Jesus up as to saying, you can get eternal life, but maybe you don't have to follow the law or something. But he, I think he was just trying to tempt him to say, you tell us how we get to eternal life. Because the only thing we know how to get to eternal life is through the law. Would you, would you say that? And then Jesus answered that, say, you, you see what I'm saying, verse 26. And he said unto him, what is written? In the law. So the guy to me it sounded like he was tempted Jesus to say something contrary to the law. But Jesus just hit him right back and said, What's written in the law? How read is it? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So so I think the guy, I agree with you on the word tempted. He was tempting him to say something contrary to the law, not tempting him to sin, but say something contrary to the law. And Jesus hit him right back and said, What's written in the law? And how read is that? And then the guy answered it. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind, and all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And then the guy tried to sit there, because Jesus said, What? Well, good. He said unto him, Thou the answer right, right? See what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you answer right, the law. Do this, and thou shalt live. So then let me ask you this question Do you think? that it was the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan that had that man tempt Christ. Oh, I, I do agree. The devil used everybody, right? To go after, you know, he uses people. He does that. Exactly. You know, like even when Peter told Jesus, you know, no, nah, this ain't going to happen. Remember Jesus? You remember back in that other scripture where, yeah. 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 I mean, so Satan, Satan does try to influence us to be what mindful of man instead of mindful of things of God. Well, yeah, which which is basically how you were reading that fold, folds into our next. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, and, and, but, and, and, and I see you see where he's coming from. He that's why he came up with that. I'm not saying that that may be the right ang angle, but I, I but brother, I was asking the question just to see exactly where you was coming from. Here's here's the thing. I think that the text wants you to understand that this man is asking the right question. Right. But it also wants you to know that his what his motive was. His motive is not pure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's the you know, but 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 all it tells you is that the question is not on the girl, but a true and a pure motive. Right. Now, now and so you have to deal with that aside from the issue. But it is a legitimate question. And Jesus turned the table on him to say, okay, now you're supposed to know this. Yeah. What the law says, right. You're supposed to, but I want to know here. I know that you know what the law says, <laughs> but I want to know if you really understand what the law means. <laughs> well, I think, I think the difference between, it's the difference between what the law says and what it actually means. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that was that was his ministry when he was dealing with the, the Pharisees. Yeah. So, you know, all the, the law, you know, they, you they understand what it means. Right. Yeah. Hey, Bishop, Bishop, I think now that he wasn't going, he didn't do that until 29 when the guy tried to justify himself. I think if, if that man had said nothing else, correct me if I'm wrong, if he had said nothing else, then Verse 28 would have ended the whole discussion. Well, well, this is the this is the purpose of Jesus' question. Yeah. Listen. Basically, he's saying, look, I know you know the law. I know because you're a lawyer. It's your job, it's your ministry to know the law. Mm -hmm. But I want to know how do you understand the law? Did you get that, now Bishop, that, is that, should you, you saying, Bishop, I mean, I'm just throwing at you guys, it's a question. 28, he answered, he said, then thou, and thou shall live, period. I mean, he answered it. The, the question you're part of saying is how he understand it is when that guy sit there and try to do the 29, right? That what you, are you kicking in from that point? Never, Jesus is never satisfied with your answer. He wants, to know if you understand. he wants to know if you understand what you're saying. 
And, I, and, I, and no, it is obvious that he didn't understand it because he told Jesus, I don't know who my neighbor is. Exactly. <laughs>